I have always done my duty. I am ready to die. My only regret is for the friends I leave behind me. I hope some compromise will be entered into between the two parties, slavery and anti-slavery, which will have the effect of allaying violent passions on both sides. In no case can I permit myself to be a candidate of any party or yield myself to any party schemes. I have never yet exercised the privilege of voting, but had I been called upon at the last presidential election to do so, I should most certainly have cast my vote for Mr. Clay. The confidence and respect shown by my countrymen in calling me to be the chief magistrate of a republic holding a high rank among the nations of the earth have inspired me with feelings of the most profound gratitude. Soldiers, I intend to stay here, not only as long as a man remains, but as long as a piece of a man is left. The appointing power vested in the president imposes delicate and onerous duties. So far as it is possible to be informed, I shall make honesty, capacity, and fidelity indispensable prerequisites to the disposal of office, and the absence of either of these qualities shall be deemed sufficient cause for removal. I will not say I would not serve if the good people were imprudent enough to elect me. In all disputes between conflicting governments, it is our interest not less than our duty to remain strictly neutral. The idea that I should become president seems to me too visionary to require a serious answer. It has never entered my head, nor is it likely to enter the head of any other person. If elected, I would not be the mere president of a party, I would endeavor to act independent of party domination and should feel bound to administer the government untrammeled by party schemes. Never judge a stranger by his clothes. My wife was as much of a soldier as I was. It would be judicious to act with magnanimity towards a prostrate foe. For more than a quarter of a century on active duty, my house has been my tent, and my home the battlefield. I know enough of the family life of officers. I scarcely know my own children or they me. In reference to the army and navy, Lately employed with so much distinction on active service, care shall be taken to ensure the highest condition of efficiency, and in furtherance of that object, the military and naval schools, sustained by the liberality of Congress, shall receive the special attention of the executive. I cannot in any case permit myself to be brought before the people, exclusively, by any of the political parties that now so unfortunately divide our country, as their candidate for office. I did not expect to encounter what has beset me since my elevation to the presidency. God knows, I have endeavored to fulfill what I consider to be an honest duty, but I have been mistaken, my motives have been misconstrued and my feelings grossly betrayed. As American freemen, we cannot but sympathize in all efforts to extend the blessings of civil and political liberty, but at the same time, we are warned by the admonitions of history and the voice of our own beloved Washington to abstain from entangling alliances with foreign nations. As to the Constitution and the Union, I have taken an oath to support the one, and I cannot do so without preserving the other, unless I commit perjury, which I certainly don't intend to do. We must cherish the Constitution to the last. Economy I consider a virtue and should be practiced by all, there is certainly no way in which money can be laid out than in the education of children. My duty to the army and to the republic whose battles we were waging forbade me assuming a position of seeming hostility to any portion of the brave men under my command. I have no private purpose to accomplish, no party objectives to build up, no enemies to punish nothing to serve but my country. A strong reputation is like a good bonfire. When you have one kindled it's easy to keep the flame burning, even if someone comes along and tries to piss on it. But if you fall asleep and neglect it, you'll wake up with ashes. The Bible is the best of books, and I wish it were in the hands of every one. It is indispensable to the safety and permanence of our institutions. 
A free government cannot exist without religion and morals, and there cannot be morals without religion. Especially should the Bible be placed in the hands of the young. It is the best school book in the world. I would that all our people were brought up under the influence of that holy book. Stop your nonsense and drink your whiskey. I am not a party candidate, and if elected cannot be president of a party, but the president of the whole people. In the discharge of duties my guide will be the Constitution, which I this day swear to preserve, protect, and defend. My life has been devoted to arms, yet I look upon war at all times, and under all circumstances, as a national calamity to be avoided if compatible with national honor. May the boldest fear and the wisest tremble when incurring responsibilities on which may depend our country's peace and prosperity, and in some degree the hopes and happiness of the whole human family. The only ground of hope for the continuance of our free institutions is in the proper moral and religious training of the children, that they may be prepared to discharge aright the duties of men and citizens. I regret nothing, but I am sorry that I am about to leave my friends. For more than half a century, this union has stood unshaken. Whatever dangers may threaten it, I shall stand by it and maintain it in its integrity to the full extent of the obligations imposed and the powers conferred upon me by the Constitution. I shall pursue a straightforward course deviating neither to the right or left so that comes what may I hope my real friends will never have to blush for me, so far as truth, honesty and fair dealings are concerned. Let us invoke a continuance of the same protecting care which has led us from small beginnings to the eminence we this day occupy. For more than half a century, during which kingdoms and empires have fallen, this union has stood unshaken. The patriots who formed it have long since descended to the grave, yet still it remains, the proudest monument to their memory. The power given by the Constitution to the executive to interpose his veto is a high conservative power, but in my opinion it should never be exercised except in cases of clear violation of the Constitution, or manifest haste and want of due consideration by Congress. Which quotation do you like the most? Don't forget to subscribe.